Welcome to Gear Talk episode four here on SR Lounge. My name is Pi. And I'm Joe. And today we're talking about our two favorite portrait lenses, meaning if you absolutely had to pick just two, which would we pick? But before we get there, what are you drinking, Joe? What am I drinking? I'm drinking a, it's called a yogurt. Or Dude, you freaked me out because you just like shook it and I thought I was going to pour out everything. No, it's frozen. It's like a little uh, Korean drink treat. Our intern, actually, Charina, brought these for us. So thank you, Charina. Actually, are those Yakults? Yeah, they're called, yeah, they they have different names and depending on the where Chinese you get one them is called in, Yakult. Yeah, they probably taste exactly the same. Sounds like a cult or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cult! There we go. We love cults. It's not Kool-Aid. How about you, Pai? What are you drinking? That looks terrible. Is that baby food? <laughs> it actually looks... <laughs> Uh, like baby food. No. This is, I'm drinking sweet potato pudding. Oh. Which is actually kind of disgusting to drink, just straight up, so I'm using a spoon. But yeah. this yeah. is my magical pre-workout shake. I'm going to tell you guys about this real quick. Get a yam or a sweet potato, pop it in a blender with a scoop of vanilla protein powder, and then add on top of it cinnamon. I actually learned this from my trainer, and it yeah. tastes like a delicious cinnamon pudding, pumpkin pudding thing. No, it's, it's true. It's, you it's forced really me to eat some and it wasn't that bad. Yeah, his reaction was awesome. I was like, I wish I had oh, it. Oh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> okay, let's talk about our lenses. So, let's do it. this is the scenario. Joe Cha, it is the end of the world. Your lenses were in a suitcase that was just destroyed and you only have two left available to you. What would you want those to be if you had to take a portrait? <laughs> It's the end of the world, and I'm still focused on photography. Yeah, Good. because let's be honest, that's all that matters, right? Well, for portrait sessions, uh, I find myself gravitating to two lenses, and now I probably only take these two lenses with me uh, on portrait sessions. Like, whether it's a maternity shoot, an engagement shoot, or a family shoot, these are the two lenses I usually have in my one bag. And that is the Voigtlander 50 1.1 and the Sony Zeiss 135 1.8. And they are just fantastic. Um, like the flares that I get from this Voigtlander 51.1, it's really hard to shoot at 1.1 because it's about as sharp as like a butter knife. Uh, but then when you can get it to lock focus or when sharpness isn't a priority in the photo, whether maybe you're taking a, a environmental portrait or maybe you're getting more of a flare than- Or planning to maybe do a vintage look to the image, a yeah. filmic look. Then this is a lens that I like to use. I've heard a lot about that lens. It's a really nice lens. Now. What, tell me what the specific shots you're going for on that lens, because at a 50 millimeter focal length, you're clearly not trying to get super close to them, right? Yeah, this, this lens is really more for when, like maybe I don't have such a pleasing background. Like one time, uh, recently actually, I had a shoot in a park in downtown Los Angeles, and it's called MacArthur Park. But literally, when I got there to start you know, my location scouting, I had to walk through a sea about of 100 homeless people. Like that's just <laughs> kind of where they all gravitate. And it's not like, you know, they're not like harassing or anything. They're just kind of there. <laughs> and um, you which the, is like you actually shot in that park. Like with that, that was background, that was their um, that was kind of their thing. They wanted to shoot at that park and I would have never recommended it. But then because that's where they wanted to, apparently they were walking through it. The 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 dude was from Toronto. And so when when he came here and, and kind of saw that park, he was like, this is really cool. There's a lot of like character to this park. Like we don't we don't have a lot of character and characters. Yeah, yeah. It's like we don't have homeless people in Toronto. And if, I don't know. I, that's what those are his words, not mine. I've never been to Toronto, but I'm sure it's beautiful. Sounds like we're going to get in trouble with this. Okay, so the client asked you to shoot in that place. Yes. So what were you, what kind of shots specifically would you use that lens to get? Um, this lens actually gives me a beautiful flare. So, okay, so there's two. One, when I'm trying to blur out the background, because it shoots at 1.1, so I can get rid of a lot of uh, distracting elements that might be there. And then two, when I want a really nice flare. I've done two shots where um, when the sun comes in, it doesn't give me the the that characteristic circular flare that you get mm -hmm. most of the time, it, it almost has like these cross flares that you get. And I'll, I'll throw up some pictures. Well, because you're see shooting those. too, like super wide when you get those flares, right? Yeah. So you get a very unique look to it as opposed to maybe a lens at 1.4, 1.8, 2.0. Yeah. So that's why I love this lens. Okay. And how much is that lens? This lens is about $1,000. I think it's like $9.99. It's not cheap. Yeah. I thought it was going to be less expensive than that. No, the Voigtlanders, um, they're, they make pretty good glass. And you can feel the construction of it, too. It's all metal and glass, so it's, it, it feels really well made. It's really nice. I've, yeah. I've, no, I've looked at this a lot, and I've wanted to get it. it this is a manual focus lens, though, isn't it? It is. Yeah, and I can only shoot it. If I didn't have my Sony a7 
or A7S, I would not recommend this lens just because within the electronic viewfinder, you can actually have fo focus magnification. So you can see, see exactly what you're focusing on and then hit the shutter. Oh, this is manual focus and manual aperture. You can yeah, actually see fun. the aperture closing down. Yeah, That's it's a ton cool. of fun too. I, I like it too, just because it forces me to slow down because I can't see what aperture I'm shooting at um, in my viewfinder. I, I look at the aperture and then I, you know, I take time to compose my shots and uh, focus them. All right, I like that. Yeah. Okay, let me go over my first portrait it. lens. And I'm gonna say that if I had to pick just one lens to go out and shoot a portrait with, um, it's going to be the 85 too. Yes. Yeah. So mainly, and I'm sure you probably didn't choose this one because I, you knew I would choose it. Well, no, I mean, if I was, uh, I used to shoot with Canon and that was by far my favorite lens. Like yeah. I would shoot entire portrait sessions just with that lens, just because I wouldn't want to take anything out of my case. Well, that's, what's wonderful about it. So at the 85 millimeter focal length, you're not going to get basically distortion, edge distortion on your lens. Like say if you're shooting a close up portrait, um, or, you know, anything like that. So with a 50 millimeter you do, and that's, I love my 50 millimeter, but I, that's why I said that you can't really get close with that yeah. because you are gonna get some edge distortion. If you frame someone's face, their forehead, or anywhere near the edge of the frame, you are gonna get some amount of distortion. So my 50 one two is kind of like more for environmental portraits. Exactly. The 85 I love because at 85, usually in most situations, I can back up far enough to still get an mm -hmm. environmental portrait. But then I also have an incredibly wide open aperture at 1.2 if I want it. And it's pretty dang sharp at 1.2, it's not yeah. bad, it's totally usable. It's not like the sharpest it's gonna get, of course, but it is completely usable. At 2.0, it's very sharp, and you get the beautiful separation of the background. Mm -hmm. Getting close to the subject, pulling away, having ultimate low light, control of bokeh, everything, it kind of makes this lens absolutely awesome. So this is kind of my go-to. If I, if I were to just have one portrait lens to choose on a shoot, I would probably go with this one. Yeah. And I second that. If you're shooting Canon and you shoot a lot of portraits, you should definitely look into this lens just because it it almost takes your portraits to another level when you're able to control the depth of field and get that focal length and that beautiful compression. It's just a killer portrait lens. Yeah, and it has a type of bokeh, like that, that background bokeh that you get out of this lens is very much different than what you get from other lenses. Very yeah. distinct look. You can quickly identify which ones are shot on an 85 versus yeah. another lens. Did you see that in the Canon Lens Wars? Yeah, I yeah. did actually. I think this is the lens that actually won as far as the most bokeh in the background. Like okay. The, for, yeah, for every like aperture and everything, this lens is actually the one in the Lens Wars series that was like hands down, if you want bokeh, this is the one to get. It's the bokeh king. It is the bokeh the bo king. king. We reign with reigns. Yeah, the Boking. Yeah. Boking the Beppo. <laughs> okay. Okay. But the only thing I would say is that it's not necessarily a very diverse lens in its overall functions and features. Yeah. And that brings me to my second choice. But let's talk about your first one. Your, my your second, my second lens is the one, the Zeiss 135 1.8. And this Ooh. was actually one what of... a nice lens. Uh, yeah. It was actually probably the biggest reason why I switched over, just for the lenses, because this isn't offered in any other mounts. Mm. Canon has 135 f2. But the, and then Zeiss actually makes a 135 F2 for all other mounts, but then for some reason, only the 135 one eight is offered in the A mount. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, uh, I, that's why when I switched over, this was the first lens I bought. And I have not been disappointed. Like the sharpness is amazing. The depth of field looks great. The compression I get. And, and I was looking at some shots that I was shooting with it and it almost looks cinematic. Like the feel yeah. I get just because of the way it renders the background and controls like the contrast and saturation. It looks amazing. Okay, so what yeah. typical kind of portraits are you shooting with the 135? This, I'm shooting almost everything with. Like, I remember I was shooting, um, I was shooting a couple's portrait and I was like, these up close look, look really good, but there was about a 10 foot high street lamp next to them. And I was like, I really want to get this in the frame. So hold there. And I ran about a hundred feet back so I can, so I can compose that shot. And it's one of my favorite shots just because, you know, I'm able to compose it the way I wanted to and I'm able to render the background. Yeah. Uh, when the distance is possible or when the distance is available, then it's awesome for that. Yeah, it's great. Cool. Okay. I got another telephoto lens over here on this side. On this side, I picked though the 7200 mainly because if I had to pick two lenses for portrait, and I guess this might be a little bit of an overlap. I chose my two lenses for portrait are a little bit kind of overlapping in their nature, but I wanted to show this lens because it's basically my backup to the 85. So the 7200, if you don't have an 85 or if you want a lens that has more versatility than the 85, because the 85 is a prime, you don't have a lot of focal length flexibility there, I would definitely go with the 7200. This is the F2.8, 
Mark II. And uh, the fantastic thing about this lens is that you can still get a bokeh aesthetic similar to that of the 85 by backing up, like you said. Yeah. You back up to like say 50 feet away from the subject and you zoom in all the way to 200 millimeters so you'd have the same, basically the same uh, the field of view as you would on the 85. And then you fire at 2.8. It's gonna be incredibly sharp. You get a really beautiful background and bokeh effect. Yeah. And you also comes along with it is 200 millimeter worth of compression against the background. So it's a fantastic lens. Also, it's very, very versatile. I find walking shots, like if I'm gonna shoot walking shots along the beach and I only have one go at it, this is the lens that I use Definitely. because yeah. I can zoom in, zoom out, kind of get a whole sequence of shots uh, or a whole kind of different angle of shots within one sequence of walking mm -hmm. as opposed to with an 85. If I'm using an 85 to shoot that sequence, generally I'll run it twice where I basically have them do the walk once where I'm shooting close yeah. and I'll have them do the walk again where I'm shooting wide. It's hard too because with the 85, the focus is kind of slow. And it is. It's hard to track, but with the, with the 7200, it's probably the fastest focusing lens I've ever used. Yeah. And so you can do, I mean, it's just a very versatile portrait lens. You can do close-ups, you can do ultra close-ups, like you can zoom in really tight, get really beautiful journalistic canon shots. Yeah. You can zoom all the way out to 70 millimeters, which gives you a little bit better focal length for say environmental portraits. I wouldn't get up close and tight on someone, but for an environmental portrait, you don't have to get as far back as you would on the 85. Yeah. So overall, I'd say this is probably one of the most versatile lenses on the Canon side that you're gonna get for portraiture. This is one of the best as far as just the quality, the look, and the artistic control you're gonna get. But again, if I had to just, if I had to go off of just the way that I shoot and what I would do as far as a shoot, if I took this lens and I had to choose one other one, I'd probably choose a lens that had a little bit more diversity in it than the 7200. This is a great backup lens and it's great for what I just mentioned. But if I had two lenses on my portrait session and I wanted diversity in their look, I'd probably go with an 85 and probably a 2470, or if I went to the other side, like the 135 two. Mm -hmm. What about the 200 F2? Or the 200 F2, <laughs> if I had $6,000 to spend. Well, I was gonna say, if I had the muscles to carry it around all day oh, long. Oh yeah, it's heavy. That thing is ridiculously heavy. It doesn't fit anywhere either. No, you need a whole nother case for it. But yeah, going off of that, if I had two lenses to pick, it would definitely be these two. I love the environmental portraits I get from my 511, and I love, uh, the environmental, but also the close-up portraits I get on my 135 uh, 1.8. Awesome, guys. Hope you all enjoy this episode of Gear Talk. Be sure to check out the actual article below the description in the video. Also, if you enjoy Gear Talk and you join these series and SR Lounge in general, be sure to subscribe. You can also check us out, support our store on srlounge.com forward slash store to see more awesome stuff from SR Lounge. We'll see you all in the next video.